told this story, so if you heard it, sorry. I'll tell it again. Um, when I got my very first pickup truck, it was the first vehicle I, I hey! Hey! <laughs> it was the first vehicle, are y'all done with your fans? <laughs> Somebody gave me an eight track player. Cause you know, there's just an AM radio and this little Dodge Ram pickup with a cab in the back. And uh, my mom and dad got it for me right out of high school. So somebody gave me an eight track player and like, you know, a box full of tapes and one of them was Cream Live. And I put it in there and it got where it wasn't playing so good so I shoved a pack of matches up underneath <laughs> it. Got stuck in there, got it where it played. And that's the only thing I listened to for, <laughs> for, oh man, literally. That truck died in Oklahoma. <laughs> and uh, I never saw it again. Yeah, but the music went on. It did. All good. It did, yeah. You know, it's it's funny though because because I really it's kind of like in my DNA, you know that Cream Live. It's, yeah. I never really listened to a lot of Clapton. Um, actually, I didn't know Eric Clapton was the guitar player for Cream Live those years. I swear to God. <laughs> you know. Uh, uh, but I, I didn't know who Jimi Hendrix was. Uh, I, although I didn't grow up listening to H Hendrix, I grew up in a house that had Engelbert Humperdinck. Oh, yeah. Yeah. The green, green grass at home. It was a Baptist home that I grew up in. And we just, I mean, my parents weren't against rock and roll, it just wasn't really what they listened to. My mom was a classically trained pianist and we had Rory Clark and Hee Haw and, you know, stuff like that. And so when I discovered Jimi Hendrix, I was so excited. I just couldn't contain myself, so I went out and got the biggest amp I could get, and you know, all, and when the gods made love, that was the first Hendrix tune that I ever heard. You know, and that's just nothing but feedback. I, I had no idea what that was. So I sat in front of my little amplifier that I got with my first babysitting job, and turn it up as loud as it go, and I'd point my guitar in which direction. It was, um, my parents didn't know what to think, so. Wait a minute, somebody let you watch their baby? <laughs> <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> I was an only child. One babysitting job that I had, uh, I had to change diapers once. And there, you know, the young one was obviously in diapers, and his sister's about four. She came out and she looked at me really weird. I put the pampers on wrong side out. And it didn't go so well. So I, I, that really wasn't my thing. So I'll get back to doing what my thing is. songs for you. It's uh, one of those songs that was on that eight track. <laughs> not only did I know it wasn't, uh, did I not know that it was um, Eric Clapton, I didn't know who Robert Johnson was either. Nah. But I was a young punk and I knew everything else. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you, you do. You when you're do. 16, 17 years old, you know everything there is to know. And then you find out how it really goes. But I really appreciate you being here tonight. <laughs> Jimmy B. Thank you. I appreciate you all being here as well on this journey. And um, we played many, many, many clubs in this country, and this is by far one of my absolute favorite clubs. Manchester. Yeah. Um, the others, I mean, they're just they're, they're really kind to us, and this is a nice music venue. You know, we're very lucky to have it here. So I appreciate you supporting music and that uh, means a lot to all of us.